All right, a fun one today. Planck's constant. So when we're doing waves, sometimes we want to know what the energy is of them. And so we involve something called Planck's constant. And we need another equation. So that equation is this. Energy, E, equals H, which is known as Planck's constant, times that funky looking V that means frequency. So again, E stands for energy, H stands for Planck's constant, which we're going to define in just a second, and this is the frequency. Now, real quickly, let's talk about the various units that we're going to find here. So the first one we have here is we have energy, and that energy is going to be measured in joules. So energy is in joules, okay? Which brings us then to Planck's constant. Now, Planck's constant is this number, 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34th joule second. Nasty, nasty variable or unit. Okay, 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34 joule seconds. And frequency is in seconds to the negative 1 or hertz. Why? Because hertz is a wave per second. Anything to the negative 1 moves it to the denominator, so it's the exact same thing. Okay? So the best thing I can do is to pull out and do a problem with you. It says, number one, sodium vapor lamps are used to light streets. If the frequency of the light coming from them is 5.09 times 10 to the fourth hertz, what is the energy? So, first of all, you know, you gotta actually ask yourself sometimes, what am I looking for? And this thing says, what is the energy? So that tells you to use this equation. You know, guys, that's tough for me because you, know, you also have this C equals frequency times wavelength thing going on, right? Well, you only use this if you're asked for wave frequency or wavelength. If you're asked for energy, you can't use that equation. You gotta use this one. So, energy is frequency times wavelength, and what you're gonna have is E equals HV. So E equals HV. So this is equal to 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34th joule seconds times the frequency which was given to you in the problem. And the frequency was given to us as 5.09 times 10 to the 14th hertz. So now, when you go to do the math on this, you have multiplication rules. 4 sig figs times 3 sig figs, therefore your answer can have 3 significant figures. You do the math on this and you get 3.3. 37 times 10 to the negative 19th joules. Uh, let's get down. Let's do one that's a, a little more complicated now. Let's go ahead and let's do, um, let's go ahead and do, ooh, let's do number three. Number three is a cool one. And the reason number three is cool is because it involves multiple equations. So I need to erase this just to give myself enough room because there is a lot to do in this particular problem, okay? So number three says this. This is number three now. Number three says calculate the energy in kilojoules, not joules, kilojoules per photon, that's window dressing, for a green light having a wavelength of 550 nanometers. Ooh, so we're given a wavelength, and it's equal to 550 nanometers. This is tricky, really tricky, because you've got to use C equals frequency times wavelength, and then use Planck's constant E equals HV. So here we go. First thing I got to do is I got to take this nanometers and turn it out, uh, take it out. So there are 10 to the 9th nanometers in one Meter. Therefore, this is five point. And did I put it? Nope. It's only two significant figures. Five point five times ten to the negative seven meters. That gives me a wavelength. Now, 
C equals frequency times wavelength, right? C is a constant, 3.00 times 10 to the 8 meters per second equals the frequency times 5.5 .5 times 10 to the negative 7th, right? Now, why do I have to do that? Because E equals HV requires you to have the frequency, but you are given a wavelength. So you've got to solve it here to put it in here. So when you do the math on this, you divide both sides by 5.5 .5 times 10 to the negative seventh, right? That's the algebra. And you get, uh, let's see, 5.5 .5 times 10 to the 14th in hertz. That's what we measure frequency in. So that is going to get plugged in right there. We just went over Planck's constant, which is 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34 joule second. That's going to be multiplied by 5.5 times 10 to the 14th hertz. When you do this, you get an answer, and that answer I have is 3.6. Two seven figures. The reason I can only have two seven figures here is two seven figures here. This one has four, but this one is two. We multiply, we take the lesser of the two. So 3.6 times 10, and I think it's to the 19th, to the negative 19th duels. Now, one last step to this problem. Boy, this problem's a real doozy because of it. It wants the answer in kilojoules. Well, you've got to do a conversion, and it is this. There are 1,000 joules. Remember that dimensional analysis stuff, right? Joules cancels joules in one kilojoule. Therefore, when you do your answer, you get 3.6 times 10 to the negative 22nd kilojoules. 3.6 times 10 to the negative 22nd kilojoules. And that's problem number three awesome combination of C equals frequency wavelength and E equals HV and making you do a conversion from joules to kilojoules. This is about as hard as I can make it. It's a great problem. All right, let's do one more. And again, we'll take a hard one. I'm on the next page. It says at the top, more difficult calculations involving Planck's constant. So it's the next page after the ones I was just doing. And I'm going to pick a really tough one. I'm going to pick number four. All right. Number four says, what is the wavelength in meters of a wave given that the energy is 3.61 times 10 to the negative 22nd kilojoules, what, and what color is it? So the first thing I have to do is I gotta take 3.61 times 10 to the negative 22nd kilojoules and turn it into joules. Why? Because E equals HV well, if you look at your Planck's constant, right, it's joule seconds, not kilojoule seconds. So you got to take kilojoules and turn it into joules, say so your units will match. So in one kilojoule, there is 1,000 joules. Kilojoules cancels kilojoules, leaving you 3.61 times 10 to the negative 19th joules. Now, why do you need that? Because you need this joules here to match. And what do I mean by that? Right here. 3.61 times 10 to the negative 19 joules equals 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34 joule seconds. Joules have to match joules so that they can cancel each other out. Uh, now, what are you multiplying that by? You're multiplying that by the frequency. When you solve this for frequency, you get cheat, three sig figs, four sig figs, so my answer can have three. 5.45 times 10 to the 14th, and frequency is measured in hertz or seconds to the negative one. But that's not the answer. I want you to know what the wavelength is. So now you gotta put this in C equals frequency times wavelength, right? So 3.00 times 10 to the eighth meters per second equals 5.45 times 10 to the 14th hertz times the wavelength. Wavelength equals, with three significant figures, 5.51 times 10 to the negative 7th 
meters. That answers the first question, but this thing also wanted to know what color it was. Well, color we don't know right now, right? But because our spectrum is in nanometers. So what we got to do now is say, okay, in one meter there is 10 to the ninth nanometers. When you do that, you get 551 nanometers. You go find your chart, you look at where 551 nanometers falls, my favorite color, and it is indeed a green light. So here's the answer to the second question. In the first question, the answer they wanted was the answer in meters. So there's the first answer, second answer. Awesome problem, makes you use all the conversions, makes you go kilojoules to joules, makes you go meters into nanometers. I mean, this is one where if Mr. Kirby really wanted to make sure you knew what you were doing, this is as hard as I can make it again. So there you go. And I just refer to myself in the third person.